Tonight, the two programs come together on the basketball court, famed Rump Arena. The Hilltoppers taking the place of Louisville, the team Western just beat this weekend, and Kentucky. Here we go again, wondering if they're staying power in the Wildcat team that just pounded North Carolina, or are they more like the team that was beaten by Notre Dame a week and a half ago? Good evening and welcome, everyone, alongside the former Army guard, Chris Batola. I'm Carl Ravitz. A lot of energy and emotion in this building this evening, but beyond that, there will be a significant contest here. It's not as if Western Kentucky comes in as a cupcake like Dick Vitale would say. This is a real game tonight. It is, yeah. I mean, Kentucky's supposed to play Louisville, like you said, Carl, and they end up getting the better team in Western Kentucky. This team is old. They have shot makers, and they have figured out a 2-3 zone that's been difficult for opponents to figure out. The one thing they're going to have to figure out, though, is that guy for Kentucky named Oscar Shibwe, who's been one of the most dominant forces in college basketball this year. It's really the goal for any team. How do you figure this guy out, particularly on the offensive glass? It starts with his motor. I mean, he's got great size. He looks like an Adonis. But his motor, his physicality, is something that on the interior, this Western Kentucky team is going to have to figure out. Take a look at some of these numbers there, Chris. Oscar Shibwe, 14.2 rebounds per game, leading the nation. And he's on a list with the Hall of Famer Tim Duncan, of course, Blake Griffin, Kenneth Fareed. What he is going to run into tonight, though, is the zone. And the guy anchoring the zone is a legitimate seven foot five star. Jamari and Sharp has been outstanding. He's capable of a triple double every game he plays, and he's coming off one of his best games. He started the last eight. The team is seven and one, and we are underway at Rupp with Kentucky in the white controlling the ball. Severe Wheeler is their point guard. He's been outstanding, and they're pressuring him out near half court. You see the starting lineup there. It is brought to you by K Jewelers. Wheeler, Ty Ty Washington has been freed up by Wheeler's play at the point. They get it to Keon Brooks, and that shot is blocked. He blocks about seven a game, and there's the first. You can't simulate the size. You know, you think you've got that shot off. That Kentucky coaching staff telling you 7-5, seven, 7-5. Five, seven, five. You just can't simulate it. Cameron Justice with the ball. What a story he is. We'll talk much more about him. The first three of the night. That's no good. Offensive rebound. And we're going to get a charge. They call that on Jarius Hamilton. But, but the impact already of Jamarian Sharp with the offensive rebound and the block. So how do you deal with somebody that size? Well, you have to be diligent, first of all, when you get it into that area. You've got to know he's coming. You've got to use shot fakes. There are shots that you normally get off that you're going to have to probably beg off of in this game. And you've got to get into his body. I mean, I think Kentucky's going to want to be physical with him tonight. Well, here's Sheetway with a chance to do that. He goes up with the left hand and knocks it in off the window. You know, it started again with a good shot fake, good footwork by Shibwe. You're going to get it one on one because Western Kentucky really spreads that zone out because of how long Sharp is. Count the basket and we'll go shoot free throws for Jarius Hamilton. I mean, Sharp just dwarfs Shibwe. He does. But when you get it here, you just got to be patient. A little shot fake. And then go up, go up as if you're going to potentially get fouled. You've got to go into his body and be physical against Sharp. Hamilton, the senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, who's been to BC. He played for Maryland. He averages about 15 shots a game. Free throw jumper is good from Keon Brooks. That shot's going to be available all night. Kentucky up 4-3. Justice, that's a contested three. It's off the back iron. And the offensive rebound goes Western Kentucky's way. And a little left-handed runner in the lane. How about Davion McKnight getting inside and ripping one down? He's the heartbeat of Western Kentucky's team. All freshman team, Conference USA last year, having a really good start to this season. And Brooks will challenge and then say, no, that's not a good idea. Washington, the baseline jumper. He wraps it home, and Kentucky shooting well to start. It was interesting, John Calipari telling us, you know, one of the things when you play against the 2 3 zone that's good for his team is the ball has to move. Well, one of the issues in that Notre Dame game, the ball was sticking much better against North Carolina, but you've got to move the basketball from side to side against zone. Lefty McKnight, no good. Sheewe rips down a defensive rebound, and Kentucky will try to run. Wheeler free throw jumper. That's good. 
I give him a lot of credit, Severe Wheeler. It says a lot about that kid, how good he was against North Carolina. He was shamed by Notre Dame's defense, eventually blamed for the loss, basically. Showed a lot of toughness and character to come back and play the way he did in that Carolina game. Over for five against Notre Dame. He had three points, just two assists. There's a long three. That's off the back iron. Another rebound offensive glass. And we're going to get a foul on Severe Wheeler. How is Davian McKnight getting inside to get these rebounds? That could drive Coach Calipari crazy. Well, he's a, he's a good rebounder, Ravi. I mean, he's averaging six rebounds on the season. He's not a great perimeter shooter, but there's really no other holes in his game. Tough kid. He's only 6'1", 190. He's one of a handful of starters. McKnight, Cameron Justice, 55, and Jamari and Sharp, all out of Kentucky. Many of them have been to Rupp Arena. Sharp's an interesting story. His team came to Rupp to play in tournaments. But he's such a work in progress, he never got into a game at Rupp Arena. This is the center, seven foot five, that we're talking about, who didn't play in his prior trips here. Well, this Western Kentucky team also has two Kentucky Mr. Basketballs on their team. Yeah. David McKnight, one of them, and Cam Justice, the other. Asking for the high screen, there's the roll, and we're going to get a foul. Looks like Keon Brooks, perhaps, with the grab. Our officials tonight, Doug Shows, Joe Lindsay, and Jeffrey Anderson. Wildcats, four or five from the floor, and again, Louisville with COVID-19 protocols. Had this game canceled a few days ago. They were unable to play, and then the calls went out to Gonzaga, Texas. There's an Ohio State phone call made. Ends up being Western Kentucky. Sheebway picks up the block and running the Cats. It's Wheeler. Too strong. Sheebway, the offensive block. And there's a block. That's the difference. Sheebway not used to that. No one is used to that. Marion Sharp, two blocks early in this one. Got in the way and he drew the charge. Good job by Sophia Wheeler making an impact. You know, it's not just because he's 7'5, although obviously that helps. He has really good instincts. Like he has really good timing. He's able to do it without fouling because he's towering over those opponents. And, and Ravi, where the upside, I mean, this kid has unreal upside. Like he is better than Taco Fall. Uh, you know, I mean, he is really so impressive and he continues to get better exponentially game to game he's a very good athlete at that size wheeler and was that a pass was it a shot either way it was swatted away Poppin ends up with it and he can't get it to go yeah i was wondering when the first taco fall reference would come <laughs> and you had it just around the 15 50 mark <laughs> you got to contextualize it rather for Absolutely. the audience who are we dealing with here <laughs> Timeout at Rupp, Kentucky eight, Western Kentucky five, and the impact of seven foot five, Jamarian Sharp is being felt. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Chris Patola, Carl Ravage, images of the Kentucky basketball programming assisting as they have done, not only with the tornado and the relief, but also helping out needy families in the greater Lexington area that's Oscar Shibway who was playing the role of Santa Claus and coach Calipari dove right into helping out the victims of the tornadoes a hundred thousand dollar contribution from tonight's game raised a total of a telethon that started last week to over 4.6 million dollars coach Cal was telling us today you get about four and a half million people in the state and they raised over 4.6 million dollars incredible well, and how grateful was Rick Stansberry that Cal would play this game? You know, he said yeah. point blank to us, Kentucky doesn't need to play this game. Right. End of the game is Josh Anderson, number four. Wheeler contests that. Kentucky's defense helping out Forston Western into a two for eight start from the floor.
one of the things that you don't see a lot with Sharp or this team, Western, they don't foul a lot. They tend to go to the free throw line a lot more than their opponents. And on the other side, Kentucky doesn't shoot a lot of free throws. Part of that is because their offense is now relying on a lot of these mid-range jumpers. As Grady fires a three that rattles down. He's their best three-point shooter. That's Kellen Grady. He had 18 points, six rebounds. That's second on the team. And he went five of seven in the game against North Carolina. And there's a deflection. All right, so let's get into Western Kentucky. What's their goal offensively tonight, Chris? How do they score points? Well, first of all, Kentucky's defense picking up right where it left off against North Carolina, which I thought was the difference. Y you know, they, they have pretty good balance, Ravi. They, they are very good off the balance. I think they're settling a little bit early in this game. You know, perimeter shots from Frampton and Justice you can live with. That's a play right there. Anderson's got to drive that thing to the rim. Ty Ty Washington rattles one in, and what a start shooting-wise for Kentucky. Alley-oop is set up, and there it is. That worked really well over Shibway. The first couple yep. tonight, for sure. That pick and roll absolutely killed Louisville. And you can see why. I mean, you could put that ball into the stratosphere, and you're still going to get a dunk out of it with, with Sharp rolling to the basket. Shibway right by. He got Sharp to actually leave the floor and then help it out on defense. Sharp's alone underneath. They don't find him. And Justice, step back three. No, nope, that's too strong. A delayed whistle, and Shao says we had a flop. A flop. Warning? Yeah. Here's this, this pick and roll. You know, Sharp at 7-5. He's not playing in cement boots. Now, he's not Fred Astaire, but, but he can move now. And he's very good at banging a body on that pick and rolling right to the basket. And once he gets behind Shibwe there, again, you could put that ball pretty much anywhere because he's got really good hands at that size. 7-5, 225 pounds. He was playing in a high school tournament. Stansbury went to scout another kid on that team. Sheepway is inside behind the defense. One of Kentucky's goals get behind the defense. But Stansbury goes and says, well, what about the big guy who's not playing? And the coach of the high school team actually brought him out on the court halftime. Stansbury liked what he saw from him. And that's really the beginning of the sharp to Western Kentucky story. He wasn't playing in high school, but Rick Stansbury saw something in him. And it's proven to be something sharp. It was later in his High school career were a couple of other programs, big programs, started to get involved, but he was loyal to Western and Stansbury for noticing him first and giving him the chance. Way again, backs in, backs in, and another block. That's just not there. You know, that's one of those. You're, you're going to have to throw that back out. Western Kentucky went to man-to-man -to -man there, got out of the zone. It'll be on either Washington or top, and it is going to be on Ty Ty Washington. If you don't know, now you know. Jamari and Sharp, it's a block party. You're all invited for the holidays. More college basketball tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern time. Virginia Tech will take on Duke, currently ranked number two in the country. And, of course, Duke, like everyone else who had been number one, and it has been a long list, but the list that has been short hasn't been able to hang on to one very long. Terrific team. You got a chance to see Bancaro play. That's coming up 9 Eastern time, ESPN2. Hi, right, Spatola. We nailed the open because we talked about Shibwe's rebounding. He's got a lot of those. And we talked about Sharps blocking, and he's got a lot of those. 
What is this, the point in the broadcast where you pat yourself on the back? Or? No, no, no. No, we we're trying to reach out Scott, our producer, Scott Matthews, so I think he was looking for credit in the commercial break. So we'll share the sugar with him. Free throw line jumper. No goaltend there. Washington pulled his hand back. And now Wheeler pushes. That's a three. Wheeler and Washington proving to be formidable. It's 18 to 7. And how about the decision by Rick Stansbury into the game? Number zero, Darius Miles, who's a 6'10 sophomore. He had been redshirted. Oh, this is a big decision here. Zero in the game, and the redshirt season is now gone. He's going to be in the rest of the games. Well, they obviously came to win. They they need to figure something out offensively. This Kentucky defense has been suffocating, and the shot selection, that one included, has not been good for Western Kentucky. <laughs> How about Darius Miles? Welcome to the game. <laughs> First shot, 6'10", three-point effort. <laughs> but if you're going to take my red shirt, I'm getting my, I'm getting my shots up. Wheeler no good Ooh. on the offensive glass. Toppin with sharp out. Toppin goes in. There is some Kentucky carryover from that North Carolina drubbing. Anderson in the paint, throws it up in the left hand. They needed that. Yeah, and they got to be aggressive. You got to put it on the floor, take it to this back line of the Kentucky defense. By Ty Washington gets it to go. He's got nine. And over 50%, 10 of 18 from the floor. Every time Kentucky seems to throw it up, it hits the rim, and it's been going in so far. Ball on the floor. And there's an alley-oop. Miles didn't get off the floor to get it. Tough shot. Sheepway there, and the tip up and in. The first points of Arius Miles' career. His first foul. Now, this was one of the concerns for Rick Stansberry. Kentucky in the open floor. You got a contested shot, really nicely defended there. And the ball is up in the other direction. And a great decision there by Sevier Wheeler. Washington trailing the play, calls for it. And then what an unreal athlete Jacob Toppin is. I mean, just 42 and a half inch vertical. He runs like a gazelle. Terrific athlete. Hopkins just into the game, and he turns it over immediately. Bryce Hopkins, early mistake, and a follow that is thrown down, and it will go in. As the big fella Sharp back in the game, he threw that down on the rim. Turnover, and you can see Calipari will not sit long with Hopkins. Two turnovers immediately, and down on the ground is Sharp. Kentucky used an 18-7 run. 18-7 uh, lead. They used a 14-2 run to get there. Break. Whistle blows. Foul on the play. Okay. You know, it's interesting, Carl. Like, I thought a lot was made about Kentucky's offense in the second half against Notre Dame. I thought it was their defense that let them down. I mean, the two teams that Kentucky's lost, lost to are the two teams that have shot the best against them from the field this year. Duke shot 52% in that game. Notre Dame shot 46%. And Notre Dame's the only team to out-rebound Kentucky this year. And Coach Cal said it pretty much after that game. It, you know, in that second half, there were a lot, of, a lot of layups, a lot of backdoor cuts, uncontested threes from Notre Dame. You know, your offense is going to let you down on the road sometimes. It's your defense that has to pick you up. And if Kentucky's relying on their offense to win them games in the second half in true road games, that's not the recipe. This team can get after you defensively 
And I thought they recommitted there in that game against North Carolina. Nicely done, nicely defended. Staying big without fouling. And those are those shots you love Kellen Grady taking. You know, those in transition, find your spot, guys pitching ahead. Finally, something at the rim from Luke Frampton. Haven't been able to call Luke Frampton or Cam Justice's names. Both those guys, three-point shooters. Kentucky doing a nice job making life difficult, chasing them off the line. <laughs> you know, that's not an easy pass to catch and then make a play following. I mentioned Fred Astaire earlier, not that I'm a real dance guy, but how about the footwork in the lane, off the bounce? Jacob Toplin, the Brooklyn, New York native. Aiden McKnight, he is left-handed, but he's really crafty around the rim. Jacob Toppin just does a lot of things. I mean, he's a really, he's not a master of one thing, but he's a jack of all trades. And when you have that athleticism, it just accentuates his impact on the floor. A little CPR action, making sure the big fella's okay. But the footwork from the Brooklyn, New York native. Brooklyn, we go hard, we go hard. Brooklyn, they go hard. Also got a little finesse to him there. Jacob Toppin, what a finish. Kentucky shooting 55% in this first half. And what a start for Ty Ty Washington. Four of five from the field, nine points in this first half. You know, when he goes straight up and down, when he is on balance, he has been so efficient this year. What a start to this game. Four of five and, and just quality shots, rather. Yeah, he benefits from Wheeler for sure. And he, if you eliminate the Duke game this season, he's averaging about 15 and a half, and he's shooting 40% from three. They got a 29-17 lead, 6.49 to go. Rebounds just about even. And again, Western Kentucky, 0 of 7 from three-point land. Let's watch how long the ball sticks in any of the Kentucky players' hands. Davion Mintz, 10 back in the game. Struggled a little bit with his shooting lately, and he got caught up in the air and threw it away. You know, Kentucky going to that weave action. He's much, much more accentuated in that North Carolina game, but it, obviously it moves the defense, but it also opens up those driving angles. Open underneath Anderson, and he kind of gets nudged all the way to the baseline. How about a little baseline jumper Ooh, from the big fella? I'm telling you. I am telling you. He hit two of those in the Ole Miss game, and, and my eyes almost popped out of my head. I mean, if he starts hitting that, with what he can do in a row around the rim and defensively. Unreal upside. Chibwe. And how about Sharp never left his feet at 7-5. He can afford to do that. 10-point game. And Western Kentucky turns it over. You're right. They're coming off wins over Louisville, and they beat Ole Miss. So they're taking care of some power five teams. You know, this is a quality team. They have really good balance. 
And they have good perimeter shooting, which we haven't seen here yet. But when you have that guy on the back end of your defense, it's a difference maker. Brooks will try. That's another block. Sharp picks up his fifth. And they're doing most of this out of the man-to-man -man defense. Give him Tucky six did a blocks. nice job cutting it up. Watch out, watch out. Come in, Josh. Get away, Josh. Ten on the shot clock. And again from the free throw line. Brooks thought about it. Brady. Splash. Boy, what a weapon Kellen Brady's been. And by getting that ball to that free throw line, Chris, it does open up the wings. The defense collapses a little bit. You know, it was interesting. Coach Cal telling us that he ended up taking Kellen Grady out of the Carolina game at one point because he passed up two shots. Yep. Like, he wants him to be more aggressive. Grady's got 11. Ty Ty Washington, 9. Trying to get his first and unable to make that shot coming off a 25-point effort. The struggles for Cameron Justice continue. Justice is 0 for 6. Grady steps into another one. He's feeling it. Red hot. 14 in the first half. Helen Grady, 3 of 4 from deep. It's 35-19. You know, what a difference maker Kellen Grady if he starts hitting perimeter shots. We know he can shoot, came in with the reputation. I think he's becoming even more comfortable. And you got him on the move more. It's not just him standing in a spot, running to a spot, and standing there waiting for the ball. He's moving into that shot, which makes him huff, tougher to defend. It's a guy who scored a lot of points in his time at Davidson. Yep, Davidson transfer. He's averaging about 15 shots a game, and he is on fire tonight in 15 minutes, 14 points. And Kentucky sizzling from the field, shooting 54%. On the other side, Western Kentucky's got to knock down some outside shots. They are 0 for 8 from 3. Five on the shot clock, and trouble for the Hilltoppers. Drive block there, Davion Mintz. That's a foul. He'll get that on Cameron Justice. Missouri and Army. So this has the interests of Spatola for sure, given that the background has the huge Army 24 basketball jersey. I just heard a let's go. So we know where he will be tonight after this one, watching that game. You got a team that runs the heck out of the ball, Army, and a team that doesn't really defend the run really well in Missouri. They do have Tyler Beatty. He set a single season rushing record for Missouri this year. Second in the nation, Army. That starts right here on ESPN after our game. So how do you manage that tonight? You got Duke, you got Tennessee, Arizona, good game, and you got Army, bat Army football. How many screens we got? Army football. We'll have a few. Army football is the priority, though. And I resent the fact, Ravi, that you would bring up the fact that Missouri can't guard the run. It doesn't matter if they can guard it. <laughs> They'll come after it. Boy, Justice just got snuffed. And the block by Grady. The offensive rebound, McKnight, and it goes. We'll tell the story of Cameron Justice out of Hinman, Kentucky, when we come back. It's all Wildcat 35 21. Yeah, sometimes things don't even warrant commentary, but the man that puts X into the X and O, Seth Greenberg's sweater, wins ugliest by far. Zubin looks like he just rolled out of the rack wearing pajamas. And Farnham passes for just somebody that could walk into a Christmas party. You'd be like, yeah, I see that sweater. So how about this story, Cameron Justice out of Kinman, Kentucky, a tremendous high school player. He went to Vanderbilt, originally recruited by Tennessee. He committed there, ended up going to Vanderbilt. Then the story gets fascinating because he played, then he got hurt, then his career was over, and he just wanted to kind of hang around basketball. He comes to Western Kentucky as a grad assistant. Last August, 
they're looking for somebody to run a scrimmage. Like, we need another body. And they reach out and say, well, Cam, are you still interested? In, uh, can you shoot? Are you still active? And he said, I'll try. He ends up on the team. Had 25 against Louisville last week. His career was over. He got married. He had to miss the first game because he was getting married. Like, real life got in the way. And now, all of a sudden, he's back playing college basketball. And here he is trying so hard. Here's his wonderful wife, Kaylee. And that's a walk. So we're pulling in a lot of ways for Cam because of all that went into him returning and the fact that he's playing at Rupp Arena again tonight. Coming off 25 points. He's, uh, he's scoreless tonight. But he's winning in the game of life. What a story. Yeah, it's what a great story. Anderson buries a three, and just like that, 35-26. And that's going to get Coach Cal to call a quick timeout. Josh Anderson had a double-double against Louisville with 13 and 10. 2.37 to go, first half. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Nine Eastern time, ESPN2 in the app as well. Number two, Duke. They open up ACC play against Virginia Tech. So I did the Ohio State Duke game, and we had just come from the Bahamas. And Chris, you can certainly speak to this. You're playing some of these teams three games in three days. UConn beat Auburn in double overtime, then they lost to Michigan State. They, Duke, had just played Gonzaga. And you could tell Ohio State just kind of hung around that game and hung around, and finally they won it late. What is Duke ceiling this season? This is the Final Four National Championship contender? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that. It, you know, their best player is a freshman who's only going to get better. You know, Wendell Moore has been one of the most consistently good players in the country so far this year. And, you know, you did that game, Ravi. Like, I thought a lot was made about their shot selection, bogging down. It's the same point I made about Kentucky earlier. Like, I thought it was their defense. When you're playing on the road, it has to be your defense, and it was so good early in the year for Duke. I mean, it was great yep. in that game one of the season against Kentucky. I thought Zed Key really punished them in the paint. He did. He did. But I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, you saw him. What do you think? Yeah, I, it feels a little bit like Baylor and Gonzaga. I think Arizona's an interesting team to watch. There's a little separation. Um, but again, they, they weren't the team that went up against Gonzaga. They were... Look, Bancaro was exhausted. Moore was, they just looked tired that night. Uh, yeah, I think they certainly are capable of all that. That time, Shibwe got it down low, and he didn't have to worry about Sharp, so he laid it up and in. And Oscar Shibwe, eight points and 11 rebounds, nearing a double-double in the first half. Western Kentucky, though, with a minute 40 to go, hanging around. Justice the drive, the left hand no good. And boy, the nightmarish first half continues. Cam Justice 0 for 8 from the floor. He played with such a swagger in that game against Louisville, and a lot of it came down to his shot making. The guy who can make tough shots. He took some some flyers, some fallaways in that game that were going down. And, and give Kentucky credit. I mean, they have draped on him and, and said, we're not going to allow you to make threes here tonight. Kellen Grady having a huge first half. 14 points back on the floor. Sheepway, jump hook. A little short and a rebound in traffic. Sharp. So... Is Sharp playing his way into, if you were to have the ability to draft him, what you've seen? Is he in the Bankero Smith, kind of Holmgren type with his potential, or is he not near there yet? He's not near there, but he's a first-round pick. There's no doubt about it. I mean, he moves. It's, his, it's the way he moves. And then the upside, like how much better he has gotten, Ravi, that you can only quickly. assume continues. Yeah, quickly. Yeah. Like, what did Stansbury tell us today? Like, they've already put on 20 pounds. I think they're hoping yep. to get him up to 250. He had Jarvis Varnado at Mississippi State, who is the all-time shot blocker in Division I. Stansbury coached him and said Sharp is in a completely different world. 
but you can't even compare them. And Fernando has more blocked than anybody in the history of Division One. Yeah. I mean, that's well, saying something. It sure is. Bernardo was 6'9". I mean, this kid is 7'5". Is with Again, it's not just because he's tall standing there. Like, this is a guy who has good instincts to block shots, and you just said it. We've already seen him hit a 15-point jump shot tonight. He makes his free throws. And there's the first whistle against him that time. Top and lowered that shoulder and got into the body of Sharp, and he picks up the foul. You know, he doesn't have a post game yet. I mean, that's the one thing. You know, as he gets stronger, particularly in his legs, you know, the ability to throw it to him on the block where he can score or distribute from there. But, I mean, he's a really good rim runner, and he's active on the glass. So Bryce Hopkins, the freshman, out of Oak Park, Illinois, check back into the game with... 39-9 to go. Toppin, a terrific athlete, of course, his brother, Obi Toppin. Uh, free throw too long, and that's how you earn playing time. You grab an offensive rebound off a free throw. She wait down low, and another block. Give him seven in the first half. You know, you learn at some point, it's just not, you're not going to get it off. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Last shot time for Western Kentucky. Anderson. He's got three. No good. And Grady. Nope, that will not count. And it hits the back iron anyway. So the last time anybody had as many blocks at Rupp Arena as this guy. It was David Robinson, the Admiral, back in 1987. Most blocks by a Kentucky opponent. He had 10. Uh, I think Jamarian Sharp is well on his way. The leading blocker has seven. The leading rebounder has 11. Spatola's going to take a quick time up, put on his Christmas garb. We will as well. Send it back to the studio. Zubin, Farney, and X. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. This is the SEC on ESPN. Hope you enjoyed your halftime. And Chris Patola, Carl Ravitch back here. Western Kentucky hangs around. It's 37-28 as we are set to start the second half. This is a Western Kentucky team that was one of nine from three-point land. They make some of those shots. It's even closer. The guy that was making the shots is on the other side. That's Kellen Grady. Really good first half, Chris. Yeah, he had a terrific first half. You know, efficient. I thought he got, they got him on the move, both in transition and then also in the half court. You know, their defense, I thought, sparked them. Kentucky got them going, and then their shot making down the stretch. It was Ty Ty Washington, middle part of that half, and then Kelly Grady really finished it. What a follow-up to how good he was against North Carolina. And what a difference, man. It's like Tyler Hero uh, reincarnated here. They haven't had an outside shooter they can count on. It feels like since Hero was knocking him down, and now, of course, he's doing it in the NBA. Meantime, we started the telecast talking about Sharp and Shibwe, and both of those guys did not disappoint. Oscar Shibwe is just three points shy of a double-double, and Sharp is, is about to set a record for an opponent against Kentucky with block shots. Samari Walker had the most in a game, 11. That is how you start the second half right there. Cameron Justice now into the scoring column as he lays it up and in. I mean, he could score now. Uh, he was a terrific scorer in high school. He averaged 18 a game when he was at IUPUI. He's averaging 13 for them this year, coming off 25 against Louisville. The defense against him was great in the first half by Kentucky. He's going to have to do that, Carl. He's going to have to drive that ball to the basket more because they've taken him off the line. Yeah, but now he has seen the basketball go through the net, and I apologize, I had said Hindman, it's Hindman, Kentucky, small town in eastern Kentucky, so good to see Justice on the board, and it's just a six-point game now. The other number that's telling about Kentucky in the first half, Chris, is Shibwe. Works against Sharp, and that won't go. They had 15 baskets and 12 assists. Yeah. Three-pointer, no good. And looks like Sharp may have taken an elbow. 
He's coming back slowly. And Washington, no good on a three. Wheeler found him. Keep an eye on 33. he has got sharp elbows, and there's a lot of body to connect with. There's going to be a foul and three free throws for Jarius Hamilton. The inadvertent elbow underneath 34 will clip 33 there. Inadvertent. Inadvertent. Doesn't make Sharp feel any better. Uh, no. You mentioned Sharp elbows. Those elbows are attached to big biceps. They sure are. So the free throw from Hamilton misses. This is a uh, scoring drought. Kentucky with the last 437 of the first half without scoring. And here we are a couple of minutes into the second half, and they haven't got one down either. This is a guy, too, who had a quiet first half. Western Kentucky's leading scorer, Jerry's Hamilton. He can score in three different ways. He can knock down a three. He can drive. He can score at the rim. And he's got a mid-range game. You mentioned the leading scorer. He's averaging 16 a game. And he's only got four tonight. But it's a four-point game, and Kentucky's looking for points. Trying to free up Kellen Grady. They do. Three ball. Money. Kellen Grady. 15 in the game. On the move. You know, he's not thinking about the shot until the ball's in his hands. He's doing his work early. Strong. He'll get his own rebound, and he won't. He didn't hustle there. Brady, the good hustle. Washington will be fouled on the floor. Sometimes when you're standing waiting for the ball, it puts more pressure on the shot. But when you're moving here, and you got a screen setter like Shibway, Nice flare to the corner by Brady. He's starting to look like that natural scorer that he was at Davidson the last two games. Pretty good three-point shooter in the NBA who played at Davidson. <laughs> Pretty good? Pretty good. Changing the game. Sevilla Wheeler, the little floater, he's added that aspect to his repertoire. Kentucky's lead to nine as Justice throws one up, and that won't go. Off balance shot, out of bounds. It'll go to Kentucky, but hold on a second. Doug Shouse comes in and says, I got a different, different vantage point. This is part of the broadcast where we say, nice piece of officiating there to help each other out. Up in the air, and he got stuck to Jarius Hamilton. Wheeler, kick. Three ball, rattles down. Kellen Grady continues to light it up from three. He's got 18 now. This is a very different Kentucky team. If he's making that shot, blocked from behind by Toppin, but that'll be free throws for Western Kentucky. And what makes this play, Ravi, is Shibway running the floor. Because he takes the entire defense with him, and you lose sight of the fact that Grady's out there, and then you have a great point guard who knows where everybody is at. But a great job by Shibway running rim to rim to take the defense with him to the paint, and you get a wide open shot in transition. Kellen Grady playing with an immense amount of confidence and the free throw is missed. It's been a rough shooting night for Western Kentucky from the floor. They are one of ten. They've missed nine three-point field goals and shooting 
Only 33%. How much of that is attributed to the defense of Kentucky? It's, it's big time. It, it's big time. This perimeter defense in particular for Kentucky, this is two games in a row now where they have really gotten after the opposing perimeter. Brady sees his Davis. highest 19. I think R.J. Davis is still having nightmares of real around. Look out, Kellen Brady's just gone above his season high. A floater, he's got 20, and he'll go to the free throw line. And have a night, Kellen Brady. You know, Brady's been good, but he's been terrific in the last two games. And sometimes transfers, I mean, look, this is his 11th game in a Kentucky uniform. Yeah. And transfers have a different timetable. I mean, just in terms of when that light goes on. But this is a guy who was the best player three years running at his time at Davidson. Missed the free throw, missed the three. Davion Mintz picks up the rebound. Ty Washington, that's the high floater over the 7-5 defender. It goes out of bounds and will stay to the Cats. And one of the things Cal Perry told us, it was interesting, because Davion Mintz has not really shot well at all. He was one of seven against Carolina. His last three, he's five of 23. But he asked his players about his performance against Louisville when he went one of seven, and they all said he played really well. He did the little things like that. Ooh. The dish to Toppin for the flush. And the crowd in Rupp is going nuts. It's 49-33. A 12-0 run. Good defense. Mintz again, the little things. And the run out, that ball's deflected out of bounds. That's how you impact the game, Chris, without having to put the ball through the basket. There is no question about it. Kelly Grady. He is on a heater. Six of eight from the field. He is wet from three. 20 points. That perimeter shooting opens that paint up wide. What a game for Kellen Grady. Wait, what? Wet? What? In Georgia, nighttime. So you're following Army football later tonight. You got a little thought on those two championship games there, Chris? The, uh, man. Well, first of all, uh, back to the Army game. <laughs> How could I move you ahead, to Ravi? I, I, I'm on Alabama. And Alabama, you know, we talked to other coaches about Kentucky and the SEC, and we can do a little deeper dive into this conference with Jabari Smith, et cetera, and Alabama the way they played. Boy, Nick Saban just continues to get the best players every year, and they certainly peak at the right time. Their performance against Georgia was terrific. And now it's Cincinnati who's going to try to knock them off. Uh, what they Brady, do, look out. Gonna... Ball fake three. Bury another Man. one. Callan Brady, 23. His career high at Davidson was 39. And what an aspect to add to a team that's got Shibwe in the middle and Wheeler at the point. Very different looking Kentucky team the last two games. There's a driving layup in from Josh Anderson. Seventeen point cushion for Kentucky. Again, this game was supposed to be against Louisville. Louisville had enough players in COVID protocols they couldn't get a team. And Western Kentucky steps in. Mintz with two. Off the iron. Shibwe there to pick up an offensive rebound and had it ripped away. This hasn't been there. Good hands. Incredible that Toppin was able to make that catch. And then the foul on Sharp. You said it, Ravi. 
Like, this opens up an entirely new dimension. And it's a dimension that they, you know, Kentucky assumed they had added. You know, they, they had gone out to get more perimeter shooting. You get the new, you know, obviously C.J. Frederick, not a part of this team. So where, right. where does that shooting come from? Well, Kellen Grady in the last few games has, has made a point. Davion Mintz will come out of the game for a second. Grady was heading to the bench. And you can hear the crowd sort of like, no, no, let's leave him on the floor. He's doing really well. Let's keep him in. Chibwe, if he makes the free throw, which he does, now has a double-double, 10 points. And 15 <laughs> rebounds. Pencil him in for 15 boards a night. See the impact Sharps had on the offensive end, but defensively and rebounding-wise, Chibwe has been not impacted at all. And that time he boxed out Sharp, and that led to a rebound and a run out for Wheeler. Good find, and another flush from Toppin. I can hear been I can so see good the wheels in your, Yeah, I can see the wheels in your head spinning. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Like the reason that that was open was because Sheepway ran the floor again. <laughs> Wheeler, right down the middle, lays it up and lays it in. And Sharp is down on the floor on the other end in some pain. Earlier he took an elbow, and now he's in some other pain, and they're going to address that left ankle. Let's take a look at Sharp. He's there being boxed out by Shibwe, and that left ankle comes down on the foot of Shibwe, and he rolled it. Sure did. Those are big, uh, those are big heads there you're walking off. Is a size 17, 18 shoe? But the last guy that Western Kentucky and their fan base want to see limping around is Marion Sharp. That was one of the questions I had coming into tonight. You know, look, it's it's one thing to to put up some of the numbers he's put up. You know, Ole Miss, not a, not a whole lot up front there. You know, they haven't really played a team. They haven't played a team that has an Oscar Shibwe. So, so how would Jamari and Sharp's game translate against a guy like that? And, and he's made his impact tonight. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, he leaves and goes to the locker room. He's got those six rebounds, but his blocks, of course, have been the story for Jamari and Sharp. That falls. 20-point cushion is going to be an awful lot harder without Sharp. Cameron Justice up to six. Washington one-on-one. -on -one. Good health defense there. Wheeler. Well, pretty. It just opened up for him, and it's high tie Washington laying him in. Yeah, the defense got all confused after the tie-up. McKnight and Justice went back to Wheeler, left Washington wide open. Point starting to pile up in justice as he lays one in off the window. Wheeler went all the way to his knees and Ty Ty Washington. That's the way it has gone for Kentucky the last two games. Put so much pressure on you in transition. Makes and misses. They've been so good tonight. Got a turnover and look at Toppin get ahead of the field, but the ball stolen. And Justice lays it in with his left. Well, as you watch this team now, as we go under 12, think about it. We'll take the timeout when the whistle blows. But 
Is Kentucky now back into that same conversation with the Auburns and the Alabamas and the LSUs and Tennessees? What is the ceiling for this current Wildcat group? They're up by 20 with 11.35 to go. And it's not just the Grady Show. Jacob Toppin has got a couple that have rattled the rim. We'll take a timeout. 62-42 at Rupp. Take a look at the season storylines for the Kentucky Wildcats. They started the whole thing. Madison Square Garden lost to Duke 79-71. And then they started to find a rhythm. The competition, of course, became a little lighter. They went on a seven-game win streak. And then we get into the second week in December. It was snapped by Notre Dame. They lost 66-62. And there was some question, like, which Kentucky team are we going to see after they destroyed Carolina? Perhaps some... As Coach Calipari said, we need to verify that win. We need to validate it, you know, and we're starting to see some validation, especially given the components between Shivwe and Wheeler and the athleticism of this guy, and of course the shooting of Grady and Mintz when they need it. We talk about the SEC and LSU and Auburn and Arkansas, and certainly Alabama. For a while it felt like Kentucky had taken a back seat, but boy, a couple of back-to-back -back performances like this, it's almost like they're tapping you on the shoulder and letting you know we're still here. We haven't gone anywhere. I mean, the common thread in their last two games has been their ability to defend. They have started both of those games against Carolina and this one with a defensive mindset. And the two games they've lost this year, they did not guard, particularly in the second halves of those games. And I think with, with how well, you know, a Tennessee, I mean, Tennessee's an elite defensive team. LSU can really guard. You know, Alabama's got to get their act together. I, I think with, with the way that teams, to one degree or another, are going to be able to score at times, I think defense becomes a separator. Uh -huh. And this, this Kentucky team, with how good they can be on the glass, they got to be able to guard, and then that gets them out in the open floor in transition. Download a sheet way, and they'll work on the... Youngster Miles, the sophomore, again, was red-shirted until tonight. And they brought him in in the first half, and now with Sharp out, they're going to have to use him, so he's going to play. And he may get abused by somebody like Shibwe, the veteran. Wheeler, great look, top and block, follow Shibwe. Terrific balance tonight from Kentucky, who came in 8-2 and two on the season. Last time they had played Western Kentucky, you got to go back to the 2012 tournament. They yeah, went on to play a national championship game. Top and alley-oop, tough pass. And it was contested that time by Josh Anderson, who was back there. Oscar Shibwe has been one of the most consistently dominant players from day one of this season in the country. What a difference maker he is. And it starts with his motor. Like when you're that size, you're going to make plays just because you're big. But when, when you play hard, you start making plays out of your areas. He's playing like he has something to prove this year. He's on his second chance. He, he doesn't have a Derek Culver next to him anymore where he's sharing yeah. some of that space and spotlight. It's his, he's the guy, which is what he wanted. He's got 21 rebounds. <laughs> Are they using him differently than they did at West Virginia, or is it just the fact that it's not nearly as crowded as he picks up his 22nd rebound? Well, the one thing I would tell you, Randy, and I did a lot of West Virginia games the last two years. Yeah. I, I give their staff and Oscar a lot of credit. He is a different offensive player. I mean, forget take the rebounding out of the equation. He, I mean, he's hitting face-up shots, 15 feet, a little bit beyond that. He's posting up. You know, he's, he's much stronger with that right hand, but I've seen him shoot it with the left. Like, his offensive game has taken a real jump, even from last season. And, and that's, I think, where, the, you know, that, that growth continues. But he started from the position of, I'm going to dominate on the glass. Tied up, jump ball, and possession arrow goes to Kentucky. Yeah, there was some, uh, there were some.
controversy, if you will, he and Bob Huggins and some of the things that were said after he left. He claims coming here, regardless of any criticism that he may have had levied against him in the past, he works hard. He says he's never not worked hard. He may be working harder than he's ever worked on the steal and the easy lay-in. But he said, I work for my family. For the first time, he went back home over the summer in six years. So there's a lot of that commitment to not only the craft of basketball, but to what he feels his responsibility is to his family. And certainly the program here that he transferred to. Easy layup for Washington. Anderson buries the three. It's always interesting, you know, Kentucky for so long, and you know this, you know, having coached at Duke and, and played during the some of their heyday, they would always get the guys that were the best players. It wasn't often that they lived, you know, kind of in a transfer portal. We all live there now, but boy, they, they have relied on it. Look at the guys that are making the biggest difference tonight in Grady and Shibwe and Mintz, who just fired a three. Keon Brooks said, I'll take it to the paint. Made a shot tougher for himself. Sheepway's going to have 30 rebounds if this continues. Up and in. It's not Sheepway, but it's Brooks. Do you hear 30? He's got 24. Do you hear 30, or do they take him out before I hear that? It. I hear 30. Now. They were moving trees and spent four or five hours there. Kentucky players have done the same. Western Kentucky team, I mean, that tornado, one of them was within a 1,000 yards of the school, the university. And the team was on the road. They woke up around 4 a.m. to a bunch of text messages from friends and family back home. They said they started to see drone shots on the news, Rick Stansbury said, around 8 in the morning. And they arrived on campus, and it was still dark, and it wasn't until the next day where they were just floored by the destruction and devastation that was there. And they have all been affected by it and have done their level best to try to help out. Again, Kentucky started a telethon. They've raised over $4.6 million in relief. And great credit to Calipari and his program and the power that he has in that state. And the state, you know, one of the things he was telling us today is, is how when the chips are down or, or something goes down, the state of Kentucky pulls together mm -hmm. and, and can really unite behind, you know, something like like that weather weather uh, tragedy. I mean, it just, you know, the way he was talking about it today, and they've, they have pulled behind what Kentucky and, and others have done to try to support those relief efforts. Driving and layup, no good, and that's the night for Cam Justice, and then a frustrating foul on Davion Mintz. So it's 75 47, it's clearly going to be Kentucky's game, Chris. Here, what are some of the things you'd look at from a Kentucky perspective beyond the final score and say, if you're Cal, I loved what we did here. These are the things that I'm going to circle on the stat sheet. These are the individuals I'm going to circle. What, what stands out that maybe the viewer at home isn't going to necessarily say later tonight or tomorrow to their buddies? You see Kentucky, and you see it differently than they do. What do you see? Yeah, I, I see that the ball, I mean, you've mentioned the assist numbers tonight. You know, in the last two games, the ball has moved better. And, and part of that is, you know, that was the emphasis in that time between Notre Dame and Carolina. Wanted to get more guys on the move. Wanted to be able to move the defense. You know, I think sometimes, you know, in the lead up to that Notre Dame game and then in the Notre Dame game, this offense can bog down and guys start thinking, I've got to save the day. I've got to be the hero. And guys start going one-on-one. -on -one. I think they've shared the ball better. Uh, and again, I go back, I hate to belabor the point, I go back to how good this team can be defensively. It's deep, it's athletic, well, it's not a great shot blocking team, so, you know, the protection at the basket, you know, Shibwe, as good as he is on the glass, he's not really a shot blocker, but, the, but how disruptive this team has been 
Rabbi, out on the perimeter, especially defensively, it has changed yeah. their last two games. Well, to that point, 3 of 15 from three-point land for a decent three-point shooting team. Western Kentucky shooting just 20%. They're usually around 34%. And Chibwe, who, who doesn't appear as if he's going to get to 25 rebounds, now on the bench with 24. That is a Rupp Arena record. Broke Shaq's record of 21. And, and you know, for all that Chibwe brings, I would just think that the offensive and defensive rebounding numbers have exceeded expectations. Like, he has been better than they thought he was going to be. And the numbers back it up. Well, you mentioned Coach Huggins, and, and look, Coach Huggins has been doing this a long He could say whatever he wants. The, the thing that I took exception to what he said about Chibwe is that we asked Oscar to do hard things, and Oscar didn't want to do hard things. And, and that's not accurate, and that's not fair. Baseline jumper rattles around in. How about Damian Collins making an impact? We saw the alley-oop, and now a little... Jumper. Was that just a hell half no fury like a uh, coach scorn? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it was, you know, and, and Huggy obviously is never shy about it. And look, a lot of coaches are cynical about this transfer portal now. I mean, yeah. there's no yep. secret about that. And I think there are things to be cynical about. But sometimes it works out. And it has absolutely worked out for that guy right there. Sure has. Six foot nine, 260 pounds, as great as he's been, as dominant as he's been, to six nine, and not a great outside shooter translate to the next level for somebody like Shibwe? Does he have a nose for the ball? Can he rebound in the NBA? Look, if Ben Wallace made a living in the NBA, Oscar <laughs> Shibwe can absolutely make a living in the NBA. I mean, coaches will always take a guy who, who can rebound the basketball with a developing game around the basket offensively first week of january kentucky's got a real test they travel to baton rouge to take on lsu the sec is a challenge night in night out and there is some parity there for sure the acc well duke number two in the country tonight against virginia tech nine o'clock eastern time on espn2 all part of the Sports week that generally leads up and peaks with the NBA on Christmas Day. You get college football, college basketball, and the schools go on break. Right now, Tennessee is leading Arizona 26 13 as the college basketball on ESPN2 continues. Christmas Day, there's your lineup. You got the Knicks at noon Eastern time, Kentucky sort of north. Celtics will take on the Bucks, Warriors, Suns, good game. Nets and Lakers, they, they line them up and load them up for Christmas Day. The games are outstanding. It's not a holiday, unfortunately, for the folks in the NBA. They are busy, and you have outstanding games. The Mavs and Jazz end things at 10.30 Eastern time. Five of the best gifts that anybody who loves NBA basketball could ask for. What a sell by you on the NBA's Christmas Day slate. I mean, you just went all in on that thing right there. Nicely usually done. Uh, usually it's like one or two games. I mean, the NBA just floods you. Or the ESPN programming department asked for it. But, man, they deliver. There's a block by Collins, and he's getting knocked around by three different Western Kentucky players. You know, Ravi, there are a lot of crazy things can happen this time of year. You, you go into exams, you come out of exams, and then you have Christmas break. And it was funny, we were talking to Cal today. He said he met with his team and said, who's ready to go home for Christmas? And the only person in the locker room who raised his hand was Coach Cal. He said, I'm ready, but we got business to take care of. And we've seen some crazy scores, you know, over the last few days. It's just when you play a two-semester sport and you, you send guys home for a break, some crazy things can happen before that break. All right, so maybe one of those crazy things is Oscar Shibwe and company 
coming back into the game. There he is with his 24 rebounds. Already with the Rupp Arena record, the overall Kentucky record for rebounds in a game is 34. He's now sniffing the heels of Mike Phillips, who had 28 in 1976. I'm not sure Oster is locked into the record books and Mike Phillips. Maybe on Mintz, likes to see one go through the bucket. It's been a while since he's knocked down a three. Yeah, that's a guy they, they have to get going. I think he's pressing a little bit. His shot selection at times hasn't done him any favors. It is another one. Five. Yeah, and you know we can we can have fun with the numbers, etc. On the one out and a dunk by Toppin. The game's over. You, you, you hate the idea of a twisted ankle like we just saw. I mean, all that stuff, at least it's in the back of your mind. Gino Oriema had that happen with Paige Beckers recently. She had knee surgery. His point when he was asked about that after the game was, I like my team much better when she's on the floor. I, I don't care what the score is. I, I don't like my team without her on the floor. case of Kentucky this thing is in the bag with three minutes to go and this is two loud statements now like the Western Kentucky is rebound. a good team I mean, yeah <laughs> yep I mean it's a loud statement rather like two straight yep. games now where Kentucky has look at this <laughs> he's got three rebounds since he's come back so he's at 27 rebounds <laughs> that's, a, that's a silly number The official score now has him with 28 rebounds, so he's two rebounds shy of 30. Remember Kellen Grady had a good night tonight? You kind of forget about that. <laughs> I'm not sure we're going to hear 30, my man. I'm just not <laughs> <You> sure. <know? laughs> I don't think so. Two he minutes to go. All Kentucky. Oh, he'd get it. Well, there's only one big O, but tonight, this guy's been the big O, Oscar Shibwe. And, you know, he just goes to get the ball. It's not like there's a whole technical aspect to his rebounding. I mean, he just is going to outwork guys and constantly stick his nose in there. I mean, these are insane numbers, Ravi. I mean, it's really, what do you what do you do? I mean, the guy just gobbles up rebounds and has all season long. Just a little fist bump there from his coach, John Calipari. You know, clearly, when you're winning by this amount and you're coming off a win over Carolina and you're about to go on Christmas break, I guess one of the things that Cal emphasized has to happen for a team, and it doesn't all the time in an era in which, as he always says, you're waiting on phone calls and people are telling you you got to shoot more. Sometimes when you share the sugar and you work hard and you get wins, you actually enjoy that part of the game as much as you do an individual part. It's working right now. That is the big foot of the seven foot five, Jamarian Sharp. He's back on the bench. He rolled that ankle, he landed on Oscar Sheepways. His night ended. Sharp was impressive early in this game. He ends up with eight points, seven blocks, and six rebounds. As he gets on the floor for the first time at Rupp Arena, having played high school ball and gone to Rupp three separate times for basketball games and tournaments and not having gotten the floor. And he will leave limping. But an impressive night, and the scouts that watched these teams, especially Kentucky play, it's almost like Stansbury when he discovered him. Got to believe he opened some eyes tonight, Chris. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, you know, he kind of announced his presence during the Louisville game and how impactful he was. But there's no doubt. 
You know, I think those who hadn't seen him yet got a, a real taste, especially in that first half, of just how active he is. I mean, 7'5", you assume he's walking in cement boots, not this guy. Really good instinct to block shots, good timing, and a, and a pretty good athlete. Runs the floor really well, a developing offensive game. Under 90 seconds, and now Kentucky and Conference USA contender Western Kentucky will turn the page, get on Christmas break, and then come back and dive deep into conference play. And the upcoming schedule for Kentucky, they'll get Missouri on the 29th, high point two days later, and then they get into the teeth of it. The LSU game is clearly the biggest challenge they'll have in the next five, and that one is at LSU, and it's on ESPN. So we look forward to heading down to Baton Rouge. I think that's the night that they were naming the court. And why not do it when Kentucky's in town? Will Wade's got himself another really good team. Darius Days feels like he's in like year 19 there. He keeps playing and keeps scoring, keeps impacting the game. quiet tonight with just six points he had eight assists though and he made his contribution felt but a balanced effort Brady 23 points Sheevway 14 Toppin 12 Washington had 20 points if I asked you without you knowing how many points did Ty Ty Washington have tonight what would you have said eight I wouldn't have said 20 oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he scores quiet points you look up he's got 20 it's like where did those come from Oh, big time block there by Damian Collins. He's probably opened a few eyes with his play tonight. And how about that at the buzzer? A little lay-in goes, and that'll be the final score. Kentucky will walk off the floor with 95 points and their second consecutive drubbing of an opponent. Awfully impressive. Way to go into the break as they take care of Frick Stanberry team 95 to 60 and Oscar Shibwe has himself an incredible game as far as the statistics go. 23 defensive rebounds, 28 rebounds overall, and 14 points. Oscar the grabber, not the grouch. It's hard to believe you could keep topping yourself with rebounding stats, uh, but he keeps upping the ante. Oscar Shibwe. What a performance tonight. What a performance by this Kentucky team. Uh, I did not see this score differential coming. I, I thought Western Kentucky would make a better game of this. And credit Kentucky. That's two big time performances in a row. They have sent a loud statement to the rest of the SEC. So I have Shibwe with 28 rebounds and Western Kentucky as a team with 27. So he out-rebounded Western often. Kentucky by one. No, you don't see that often at all. Check out SEC Network. You'll be able to hear from the big fella, Oscar Shibwe. But that'll do it for us. Chris, to you and your family, have a wonderful holiday season. Good luck tonight to Army in their football game. And for Scott Johnson, our great producer, good luck with the Alabama-Cincinnati football game on New Year's Eve day. This was hardly anything that required CPR for our producer.